Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up Leia Organa uh, to use in FFG's game Star Wars Legion. The pose and clothing she's wearing is very similar to the one she wore on Endor, so that's the sort of style I'm going to go with. Before I get started though, as usual, let's get that kettle on. Okay, so let's get started. Now the first thing you, you want to do after actually building the miniature is give it a good base coat. In this instance I've used Games Workshop Wraithbone, uh, which is the one they, they recommend to use with the contrast paints. And I will be using a few contrast paints in this, this build. So the first thing I did after I, I gave it the base coat was to go for the eyes and the skin. Now the eyes are something that I, I always uh, do try and do first because it's really really fiddly and if you mess it up you tend to mess up the paint around it so it's one thing I want to try and get out of the way the first thing I used is Corvus Black and that was just to draw a line essentially from the bridge of the nose outwards to the edge of the eye so you've got a, like a dark line essentially the next uh, next thing I did was use White Scar to do exactly the same thing again draw that line from the bridge of the nose outwards but to, to the center of the black line that you that we'd created and essentially what that's doing is is giving a dark area around the eyes with the the light of the um, the actual eyeball in the center then we need to actually pick out the um, center of the eye itself the iris uh, and to do that I've, I just use Corvus Black I don't go for any colors or anything because I think that always looks a bit weird so I just go with a black dot essentially in the middle um, or depending on which direction the, the character is looking I put it to the sides what you do as you can see there is just draw a, a line in the middle and essentially you've got the eyes are, are, are done you may want to tidy this up after with, uh, just around the edges but um, it worked out quite well in this instance the next thing I, I was, I'm going to do is the skin to get that out of the way and to do that I've used Contrast uh, Gullium and Flesh. It's a really good paint that goes straight on the miniature. No messing about with highlighting or anything like that. You can just pile it on there um, and it's, it's done essentially and that's the skin tones all sorted. If you, if you want to have more of a professional look obviously you want to be using different tones and things like that but I want to just get this miniature painted so I can get her on the tabletop and start playing games with her uh, which is why I've used it using the contrast paint essentially. The next paint is the, the leather work. Now, as you can see from the picture on the screen there, she uh, tended to have a, a lot of black, even though the belt did show a little bit of brown. It's mainly black um, to be screen accurate, so that's what I've gone with. To, the black I've used is Contrast Black Templar. Now, to do um, this is, a, again, a really good paint. Uh, that you can just pile on there, and it, it requires no highlighting, essentially. You may want to darken it down in a few areas, because it does go on, the, on there very thin. Uh, so it may show up uh, very light, um, and if you're wanting a really dark sort of a black colour, you want to just give it a second coat, or go on there uh, quite heavy. I, I tend to go on quite lightly with these paints, even though you're supposed to give it a really thick coat with a contrast paint. I go on lightly, so then I can build up the colour if I want to. The next paint we're going to use is Contrast Skeleton Horde, and that's to do with like undershirt. You can see it's almost like a tan sort of a colour. Skeleton Horde's not exactly right, it's a little bit dark I think, um, but it, it works quite well and it, it looked pretty effective once it's on there and the rest of the paint's, the paint's down. Um, just take a little bit of playing around with on this one. I also did the stripes down the, the legs at this point down the trousers uh, because it's a very similar sort of a colour uh, and the Skeleton Horde's easy to use. Next paint I used was actually a Fenrisian grey, it's a layer paint this time, not a contrast paint, just to do the trousers because it's, the colour is pretty much bang on uh, for, for all I wanted and I didn't have to uh, mess around trying to find another colour. I had some Fenrisian grey left over from a Space Wolf project many years ago um, and it's great for this and it, I only needed it for the trousers obviously so I had just enough uh, to, to do that with. 
because it's a layer paint not a contrast paint you may want to add some shading after in the form of non oil or something like that I didn't in this case I thought it looked really effective I think the trousers in the film are very such a, a like a block of color there's not much shading to them and I wanted to sort of replicate that so then Next paint to use was a little bit of a mix in this this time, which was for like a like body warmer that she's wearing, because it's essentially got like a slight green tinge to it if you look at the picture on screen. So I've used a flayed one mix of flayed one flesh and nurgling green. I did this to uh, to, to get this effect. I, I probably put about 25% nurgling green, 75% flayed one flesh, just onto a palette and mixed it in, and then uh, applied it to the miniature. Um, on as you can see, I'm painting it now. You, you don't really get the sort of greeny uh, sort of effect that you that you get in face to face. It's it's quite a decent uh, color, and it's not far off the main color that you see uh, in the in the films. The next paint was um, contrast wildwood, and I did that use this to paint the hair. Now it, it went on quite light, so I had to put uh, do a couple of coats of this one to make sure it was um, it was dark enough, and it was I tried to get a hair as as close as possible to what you see on the screen. So I did do uh, a, a couple of coats just to darken it down a little bit. But it, again, it adds the shading in straight away for you, so there's no messing around. I then used a lead belcher, which is a silver base paint from Games Workshop, just to, to highlight the, the weapon. Um, you tend uh, a lot of these Star Wars weapons tend to have uh, be like be quite black uh, with like silver edges essentially. So I just wanted to replicate that um, in this instance, and it's only the the gun that I needed to do on this particular miniature. At this stage, um, before I actually went on to highlighting the the um, the jacket, I actually. Uh, started painting the base just to get that out of the way and I used Corvus Black just to go around the base uh, just to, to frame the miniature essentially it does take a couple of coats it goes on quite th uh, thinly so you can see straight away it's very streaky so you will need to do two maybe three coats on there I also put um, some PVA glue on the base at this point to, to add in um, the sand and I just used a, a really fine play sand um, and you can see there it's, it's looking quite nice already now the, the highlighting or shading that I've used on the on the jacket I've used non oil for um, I wasn't going to I was going to leave it as it was but it, it just didn't sit well with me uh, so I went back to it and I added a little bit of non oil I only put it on really really thinly uh, just took my time with it trying to to mainly concentrate on the areas where there were recesses because I didn't want to lose the color that uh, that I'd gained uh, in mixing the paints earlier on. I then started painting the base to do that. Um, the first paint I used was Rhinox Hide. Just took my time with this one, get it uh, a, a nice even coverage over the sand. The sand was still a little bit wet at this stage. I hadn't let it drop the PVA glue dry um, as long as I should have done. Um, so it, I did really have to take my time with it, and I could see some of the sand was moving around. If you if you do this, uh, I don't really recommend it because you, if you do move a lot of the sand around, you can't really fix it without letting the whole thing dry and starting again. To highlight the soil, I then used uh, Zandri Dust, and I just did a dry brush over the top. You can see I went on quite heavily uh, with this dry brush, to, just to pick out all the lighter areas, really, and add a little bit of uh, definition to the base, because it was just one big block of brown, and I didn't want it to look like that muddy, um, so I went on there with that. I then used a little bit of super glue just to drop on some grass tufts. I always use super glue with the grass tufts because I tend you tend to find that they fall off after time or the the glue in them just falls apart and you, you lose the tufts essentially. So I usually use a little bit of super glue just to hold them on there. I then use a little bit of PVA as well just to get the um, some uh, static grass down as well. It's slightly different colour to the tufts just to give it a little bit of interest, and make it look a little bit mixed. And there we have it, the miniature's finished. I think she looks pretty pretty accurate to what you see on the screen. I'm really, really pleased to, at that how she looks. Um, on the tabletop, you know, three feet away when you're standing on the tabletop, she looks bang on. And it's really, really good. I'm, I'm really pleased that I've finally got around to painting this miniature. Leia's definitely one of my favourite from the Star Wars series. Every, every film, uh, I think she's brilliant in. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed painting her. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see any future videos. Let me know what you think in the comments and give me a like as well. Just let me know what you think. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.